when you're playing fast. A lot of mistakes. You're, you're missing strings. You're not pushing down hard enough. You're off a little bit. You can cover those things up because it's so, it's so right there in your face. It's moving. And you kind of get caught up in the moment where you can get away with those things. But when you play, when you slow it down, something else happens. There's, there's, you hear the harmonics and the nuance of each string. You hear what's called the overtone. Like, if right now everyone holds a C, you know the difference from each instrument by the overtone that it plays. And a lot of that gets lost in hype and in, in the, the, the fast music. I'm, I'm struggling because I'm still listening, but I'm trying to paint this picture in a simple form of music. When you slow things down, everything has a ring, it has an overtone, it has, it has a certain characteristic that when, when you just slow it down, you can hear that and it begins to do something different than the strum. And I think a lot of times when we're in church, it's easy when we're playing a fast song. I mean, I'm sure most of us have gone to the store and you find yourself doing this. Like there's music playing and you don't even know it, but you're tapping your foot. You're tapping your hand. You're in that moment, something is happening that you respond to it, but you're kind of caught in that moment. But when you slow it down, there is an expression. There's something so much more different. It's not, you're not caught up in the movement of something, but you begin to express something. There becomes an overtone in that sound that's, that's being played. So with this, what, what I'm sensing in my spirit, it's not getting caught up in a moment of excitement. So either two things can happen. This would be really good or really bad. Either you're gonna fall asleep or you're actually going to let something join with the sound and the song that's being played and respond to what the flow is. Or I hope I get the flow right, but I'm pretty sure I know what I'm hearing right now. And I just want to encourage you. You can get lost in the nature of the song because in a negative way because it's an old song or you're tired and you just can't enter in. But if I just want to challenge everyone. As we sing these next couple of songs, just press in, just worship. Don't get caught up in the excitement of the music, but let something register inside of you with how God is moving and respond to that. However it comes, it can be quiet, it can be dance, it can be singing the song, or it can be singing your own song. But what I sense is there's an overtone, there's, there's a harmonic, there is a sound that's released in the middle of this song that's where the worship begins to arise. Just to sing, I love you, Lord. Oh, just to sing, I love you, Lord. Just to say there's no one else, Lord. 
There's no one else like you. Sing, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Yes, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find. Suck. 
could search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There's none like you. like you God oh, and none can compare like to you my God no not one there is none. oh not one not one like you for it's you
Just open your floodgates, open your floodgates. I rejoice in you, my God. Yes, I rejoice in you, Lord. For you are my joy. Yes, you are my strength, God. Yes, you are my joy, Lord. And you are my strength, Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. I'm gonna give you my praise. I'm gonna sing with my soul. Not holding anything back what he is in this place. Just begin to declare what he is. God has brought us through so much, each individual, that it puts a song in your heart. It reveals who he is individually to you. I can't write a song to incorporate everyone, but together when we worship, just begin to declare who he is in your life. Begin to declare the lack that you have in your life, he can fill it. So begin to declare him. If you need a healing, just begin to say, Yes, you're my healer. Yes, you're my healer. Yes, you're my healer. Yes, you're my healer, God. It's who you are, God. You're my deliverer. Begin to sing. Yes, you're my deliverer. Yes, you are my comfort. Yes, you are my comfort.
Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Sound of heaven touching us. The sound of heaven touching us. The sound of heaven touching us. 
的情歌。The sound of heaven 的情歌。You know, I uh, I got this thought. All you got to do is read the book of Genesis. Every time God wanted something, He just spoke it into being. But when He wanted a man, He reached down. And touched earth. Took a pile of dust, shaped it, formed it. Said that's going to be like me. So he breathed in it the breath of lives. It was a picture to us. The next thought I have of God touching earth was Moses going up into the mountain and it was on fire. So when God touches earth, there's always an earthy reaction. 
So when God comes to touch your earth, it's not really your earth, it's his earth. And I was thinking earlier, you were, Andy, you were saying we should just sing out, he's my healer, he's my deliverer, whatever. And the real truth of the matter is, whatever he is to you is the level of what you will praise him. You'll only worship him to the level of what you've experienced him as. Everybody in this room is at a different level, a different place. And so you'll only worship him to that level. You'll only bring him into that level. But I heard the Lord say, I want to expand you. I want to, the word I actually heard is, I want to stretch you. I want to expand you. I want to take you into another dimension that you begin to praise and worship according to who I am, not what I've done. And the thought came to me, I had this scripture out of Colossians. For by him were all things. Isn't that amazing? For by him, the greatest expression of God touching earth is when that baby was born and they laid him in that manger. The greatest expression of what God ever had is when God touched earth. And it says, for him, that baby, that, 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 we're about to celebrate that, that birth. I, and we understand the whole picture of, of Christmas. We're here to celebrate it. But just think, that eight-pound baby laid in that manger. They could point at him and say this, for by him were all things created. Things that are in heaven and the things that are in earth. Whether they're visible or invisible. Whether it be thrones or dominions or principalities and powers. All things were created by him and for him. What are you here for? For what? You're here for him. We're here for him. But the word that caught me was all things. He's all things. You said he's, for some he's a healer. For some he's a deliverer. For some he's this, he's that. But the word says he's for all things. And if you take that principle into thought, and you go over in 1 Corinthians, Paul said this. I think it's 1.9. He said, to some I became this, and to some I became that. But he said, I could become all things to all men, Amen. that I might gain some. Yes, sir. Amen. Guess what? Do you realize that you can worship him for who he is? Because he's already made us all things. I walked in the door tonight and the first thing I heard the Lord say to me was this, tell the people, I always rule from the mercy seat. I always rule from the mercy seat. What does that mean? That means that Paul said I can become all things to all men that I might gain some. To some you show mercy. Others need a word of encouragement. That's like grace. But we become everything to everybody. And in worship, that's the greatest worship we can give. Is what we, we're declaring. 
that he's everything to every man. Everything. Everything to every man. I don't know about you, but he's everything. Everything. Everything to us. And what he's trying to do is stretch us into that understanding that he's even more than what he's done for us. He's more than what he's done in us. He's more than what he's going to do through us because he was made the fullness of all things. Amen? Amen. When God touches your earth, guess what? All things are available to all men. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Well, Brian, come on. You have to announce your speaker. Oh, you're here, Stephen. Okay. I guess.